Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on detecting spaces in text boxes using VBA Excel. So I have on this worksheet a column for participants and I have ID numbers here just going from 1001 through 1100 and then I have these empty variables GPA, midterm exam, and final exam. So if we want to use a user form and text boxes to populate these records. We can go here to this orange rectangle. I right click this, you can see it's associated with a subroutine named open form. And that opens this user form here. And these labels are based on the variable names here in cells B1, C1, and D1. And then you have these three text boxes, and then enter. So if I select the record I want to update, for example, cell B2, the value, GPA value for participant 1001, I move over to the orange rectangle, open this user form. Let's just use the a GPA value of 3.5, a midterm exam, say 80, and a final of 90. And click enter and it populates the data that I haven't that I had loaded in the text boxes and then moves down to the next record automatically. Now let's say the user attempts to use the user form and leave one of these values blank and you want to alert them to the fact that one of the sex boxes is empty and no value will be transferred to that cell. So for example, with GPA, if it's left blank and we move to midterm, put a score of 85 and final score of 95 and click enter, we get this message box and it says form is not complete. Do you want to continue? And it highlights the empty field yellow. And let's say that we intended to do this. So we would click yes and it'll just populate the midterm and the final exam. If we did not intend to do this, we click no, we don't want to continue and it'll give us an opportunity to populate GPA. So let's click no. I'll go back and put a GPA of 3.6. Click enter and now it populates the cells accordingly. Well the problem here is that a user could put one or more spaces in one of these text boxes. So instead of GPA being popular with the GPA, I'm just going to put a space in. Now move to midterm and here I'll put 80 and final 75 and click enter and no message box comes up. It treats the text box as if it were populated because I had that space in it and it puts the midterm and final exam scores in and you have no GPA value. So it didn't accomplish the intended function. So let's take a look at the code behind this worksheet in the Visual Basic Editor, Alt F11. And we can see the subroutine open form, user form 1, and that's that blue user form, this one here, user form 1.show and user form 1.textbox1 set focus. So the focus will be set on that first text box. So the user can start typing right away, not have to click into the text box. And then we have the code behind the user form. So we have command button one click up top, and then a subroutine named reset form just changes the back color of the three text boxes to white and sets them to empty and resets the focus. And then we have a subroutine that runs when the user form is initialized and it just sets the captions to match the variable names. So of interest will be this first subroutine, the command button one click. And you can see here that we start off with a if statement. And it's if text box one dot value equals quotation mark, quotation mark, it's nothing, or text box two is nothing, or text box three then, and then we have three more if statements. And this checks each text box to see if it was empty and if it was 
sets the back color to yellow and at the end here you have this if message box another if statement if message box form is not complete do you want to continue VB question plus VB yes no not equal to VB yes so if it's equal to no it'll exit the subroutine otherwise it'll continue and then it'll move to active cell equals the text box one value and then offset one column text box two and two columns text box three and then move to the row below and then reset the form by calling this other subroutine here so we can see taking a look at this first line of code that if a space is put in and we have this text box one dot value equals nothing this statement will return false because the space will indicate that something is in the text box we don't want that we want the space to be considered empty as well so right now if we have a space this evaluates to false for text box one for example if there's a space in text box one and it'll skip all the way through and if and start with active cell equals text box one dot value so in this instance we can use the trim function so that if there is a space or if there are spaces in text box one for example this first expression will still evaluate to true so we'll add to this expression using the trim function this will be trim and then open parentheses and close parentheses now this is just for text box one so far so if trim text box one value equals nothing and then we have text box two and three so now if there's a space this is still going to evaluate to true whereas before with a space it would have evaluated to false the trim function removes the spaces now similarly we're going to have to put trim in front of this first conditional statement this first if statement inside of the main if statement so if trim text box one dot value equals nothing then so I have to change this one up here and this one here that will change the back color to yellow so now if we move over to the worksheet and I'll attempt to add values for participant 1004 go here to the user form and for GPA I'm going to put in space midterm exam 75 final exam 80 click enter and now even though we had that space in there it still detects that as empty it still returns that this text box does not have a value in it which is what we want we want it to be treated as empty even though there's a space in it so if form is not complete do you want to continue click no I'll go back and you'll notice the space is still there so I have to delete that space if I want the cursor to be all the way to the left or I can just type in directly after that space so if I want to put a GPA here 2.8 I can do that and it's still going to enter it into the worksheet however I'd rather have that space removed if space or spaces are in there I want those removed so that when the user goes back to that cell the cursor is all the way to the left so moving back to the code just have to add one more line of code to accomplish that for this text box one and that'll be in the second if statement and here I'm going to set text box one dot value equal to nothing so moving back to the worksheet I'm going to attempt to enter data here for participant 1005 and this time I'm going to put a lot of spaces in more toward the middle 
and then move her to midterm, 80, final exam, 70. Click enter. Form is not complete. Do you want to continue? Click no. Move back into text box one and notice the cursor is all the way to the left. So when I start typing, the score, the GPA, is all the way to the left the way I want it. Click enter and we've added to the data set. Now moving back to Visual Basic Editor, of course this was just for text box one. Here up top, right below that, and then in the second if statement. But we would have to make the change for text box two and three, both up top and in the if statements that change the background color, the back color to yellow. So I've added the trim function every place it needs to be for this to operate correctly three times up in this first if statement and then once in each of the next three if statements. The only thing I need to change from this point is to set the text box 2 and text box 3 values to nothing in these if statements that set the back color to yellow. So I'm just going to copy text box 1 dot value equals nothing. I copy that and then move in here. So it's control C to copy, control V to paste and just change text box 1 to 2 down here and then down for text box 3 just change text box 1 to text box 3. So now this subroutine is configured to detect those spaces and return a text box that has spaces as being empty and that would alert the user. I hope you found this video on detecting spaces with VBA Excel to be helpful. And as always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me. I'll be happy to assist you.